My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends, I'm just trying to make you a little money. My job, not just to entertain, but to educate, to teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Now that we are already one-fifth of the way through earnings season, we can start identifying the winners and losers so we can do better going forward. Now, I know on days like today when the Dow managed to finish up 10 points, S&P dipped 0.02%, Nasdaq lost 0.18%, but it was after a furious rally from a very big down opening. It can seem like there aren't any winners, but that'd be dead wrong. In fact, there's been a, a great deal of winners. They just don't get much airtime because they've got nothing to do with tech. Too many commentators treat tech stocks as the protagonist of the market, but that really tends to lead you astray at moments like this. So let me tonight take down the winners because we have some legitimate, sizable bull markets going on here, and they show no signs of letting up, and I want you in them. The first, the first, the banks. Yes, these banks, they have been incredible performers. I think Wells Fargo is about to take off. One reason we own it for the Chapel Trust. I told CNBC Investing Club members today at the morning meeting that this one looks like it's about to blast off. Hey, J.P. Morgan, after all, it's still cheap. U.S. Bancorp reported a monster quarter today. Great loan growth, very low defaults. After such furious rate hike cycles, don't you think that's impressive? I do. But not as impressive as Capital One, COF, which shot the lights out last night with remarkable growth and defaults still well below the heyday before the pandemic. As someone who's learned a lot from Capital One's longtime CEO, Richard Fairbank, over the years, I'm still stunned by his ability to challenge even the deepest of downturns. He's been running this company since it came public in 1994 and has steered it flawlessly the whole time. Capital One surged more than nine bucks today because people bet against him. They figured the huge credit card business would be plagued by equity, you know, by uh, equally huge defaults because the rates go up so fast, right? Well, they were dead wrong. As for Wells Fargo, well, okay. It is slowly but surely moving up since it reported. But even here, it is ridiculously cheap, down more than 20 points from where it was trading five years ago. Even as almost every other bank stock is dramatically higher. Enough of it in the penalty box. Sure. I mean, I get it. I mean, it, it, it's all these consent decrees that Charlie Scharf, who's the CEO, has to solve. It's, but it's a legacy of his far less ethical predecessors. While there are still nine of these left, yeah, nine consent decrees, the big sanction from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has now been dealt with. That was the one that I was worried about. Second bull market is aerospace and defense. Now, this is honestly one of the most electric bull markets I've ever seen. Corner. Okay, yeah, nobody seems to care about this. This morning, Boeing reported a quarter that was the thing. Of the, it, was, it, it was beautiful. Now, it was the kind of numbers that they give you back in the old days. I'm reminiscent. When Boeing dominated the industry, constantly crushing Airbus, its heavily subsidized European rival, they're finally printing money thanks to the post-COVID travel boom that's led to a post-COVID plane shortage. Now, maybe you're wondering why I'm so positive on these numbers, because it sure looked like Boeing had an earnings shortfall. It's simple. See, Boeing is what's known as a cash flow story, not an earnings story. And the cash flow came in sharply better than expected, with management guiding for even stronger numbers going forward. Not that long ago, I thought Boeing would have to dilute shareholders with a gigantic equity offering in order to raise money. I don't think so anymore. I now think Boeing is beginning to feel like the old days, the Jim McNerney days eight years ago, when my confidence in the business was unshakable. Boeing's now beginning to win a larger share of orders than it has in years. You know what? I'm even betting that China will soon return as a growth area for them now that they're out of lockdown. On the defense side of the aerospace defense, I've got, I'm very impressed with Lockheed Martin the other day, which is supposed to have some sort of weakness due to congressional budget woes. But in a world where everybody's recognized the need to rearm thanks to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, please don't try to outsmart yourself. Just go buy the stock of Lockheed Martin. Jim Takelet will do it for you. He's the CEO. Raytheon knocked it out of the park, too. And I'm now furious at myself because we thought about buying it for the Chapel Trust, but we never pulled the trigger. Raytheon's numbers were so much stronger than the last quarter in part because, you know what, they found many more engineers, including a Megaris from the wasteland that is now enterprise software. The orders here from both commercial customers and the military, I think they're possibly insane. You know this aerospace bull market is powerful because it can even carry 
heaven forbid, the stock of General Electric, which has been in bear mode for ages. GE's orders and cash flow were outstanding. Once they spin off the power business, something that should happen early next year, you'll see how strong this company really is. CEO Larry Culp has moved mountains to get this company where it is. It's time to buy, not time to sell. Let's also remember that aerospace is the tail of another giant bull market, the airlines themselves. We got terrific numbers from United and Delta. Phenomenal. That will be surely te sorely tested tomorrow when, holy cow, Southwest Air reports in the wake of their holiday season scheduling snafu. We'll be interviewing CEO Bob Jordan tomorrow on the squawk of the street. You know, the best thing I can say is willing to come on. But we need answers. America needs answers. Hey, speaking of America, American Airlines supports tomorrow, too. And based on their strong pre-announcement earlier this month, I bet we'll like what we hear. Fifth bull market, trucks. That's right, a bull market in trucks. One of the best, if not the best quarters so far this whole year has come from a company called Packar. That's P-A-C-C-A-R, not Packar, but Packar. And that's also, you probably know, as Kenworth or uh, Peterbilt. Everything was a record here, including revenues and profits. According to CEO R. Preston Fate, quote, Demand is strong in all markets for Packard's industry-leading new trucks and transportation solutions, and we look forward to 2023 being another re excellent year, end quote. Well, that's in keeping with what I heard from J.B. Hunt, one of the largest trucking companies in the country, which is struggling uh, now as retailers work through the inventory glut, but anticipates a turn as soon as next quarter. The Packard quarter's an excellent predictor of the numbers that you might get from, say, Chapel Trust fave Caterpillar when it reports next week. The stock's up a lot. Might be a good buy if it comes in before the quarter. Hey, same goes for Cummins, CMI, which makes truck engines. Remember, we finally started to get drivers back, and that really does matter. New people learning to drive big rigs, too. Great news for the group. We've got a couple of other bull markets that may be too nascent to invest in, but I want to call your attention to them. That said, the discount, uh, how about the discounters? They seem to be in bull mode. I'm talking about deep discounters like Dollar Tree or Five Below or TJX. At the same time, I'm kind of shocked in the strength of Telco. Yesterday, Verizon put a very, very weak quarter, yet there's barely been any downside follow through. On the other hand, we got a true upside surprise from none other than ATT. I think we'll also get great numbers from T-Mobile when it ports next week. Now, I know it's too early to flag pharma, but J&J &J reported a very strong quarter ahead of its breakup. It just the other day, I, it wasn't hurled at all. I think it should have been. I like the way Merck stock acted, even as it stopped a very important prostate cancer test for Keytruda. Regular viewers know I think that Eli Lilly could report a good quarter with strong guidance. Don't forget, they're really expanding their manufacturing capacity in North Carolina. I think it's because of their diabetes drug. I also like the oil service stocks, but I seem to be alone in feeling that way. Still, SLB and Halliburton delivered extraordinary numbers with stunningly positive commentary. So I, I, let's just consider it an icing on the cake bull market that might thaw when the big oil companies report. We saw a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic Chevron buyback announced for this very night. Oh, how about the entertainment stocks, Disney, Paramount, Warner Brothers, they're all smoking. What matters is that you can spot these bull markets with ease as long as you don't get distracted by enterprise software, which I told you is the most bearish mar part of the entire market or anything that touches on that digital world. Let me give you the bottom line here. It's time to recognize that tech's no longer the, the only game in town. In fact, much of tech is no longer in the town at all. Time to find a better game. I want to go to Michelle in New Hampshire. Michelle! Hey, Jim. I just joined the investing club. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. I really appreciate it. <laughs> what do you got? I had, a question. I had a question on Domino's. I saw the CEO on your show. I got all excited. I'm a member of Domino's. I eat there eight times a month. He had electric vehicles. I was so excited. I bought 27 shares at about 393. The stock has gone down and it's gone down again. And I'm trying to find out if I should hold on to it or let it go. I like Domino's and not just the pizza where we always know the banana peppers comes on time. I think it's terrific. The whole pizza segment is doing well. Uh, PZZA got a very nice recommendation. I want you to hold on to the stock. And if it falls any more from here, I would be a buyer. And thank you for being a member of the investing club because it just means the world to me. I love it. It's electric. How about Craig in California? Craig. Ba -ba 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 booyah to ya, Jimbo. Very well. Very, very exclamatory booyah. What's going on? 
Uh, yeah, I'm uh, just wondering. I'm trying to find a, some stocks that haven't been shot up the last three months. I'm looking at two. Both have a decent multiple, nice dividend. Uh, UPS uh, and FedEx I'm looking at. Let's uh, do FedEx. Let's do FedEx. Doesn't have a union problem. We're not worried about any sort of contract that's coming up. I think the new CEO is doing a terrific job, and I think the stock is at a very inexpensive level with a 2.45% yield. Not as good as UPS, but every bit is good when it comes to growth. All right, it is time to recognize that tech is no longer the only game in town, people. In fact, I think it's time to find a better game completely. I mean, money tonight, Levi CEO Chip Berg announced his succession plan with former Kohl's CEO Michelle Goss taking the helm of the iconic apparel company. I'm sitting down with Chip to learn a little more about the plan, what the future could hold, and that nice quarter report after the close. Then Microsoft reported last night it was not as great as the speed you hoped for. I'm digging into the details, sharing all you need to know with Mr. Softy. And going once, going twice, sold to your portfolio. I'm sitting down with Richard Brothers Auctioneer to see if this could be a strong, under-the-radar way to play the heavy machinery and trucking space. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.